Well, we set up the we camera. We set up the camera. To we're allow them watch. to watch us. So technically, we're kind of self-propagating. We're enabling perversion. No. Yeah, that was it. We're, we're pervert, pervert enablers. enablers. Fantastic. <laughs> Simon now and Jamie, got that YouTube up. pervert enablers. <laughs> now you've got that. Welcome to the video. <laughs> Actually. <laughs> Okay guys, so this is the video you asked for. Jamie and I are finally doing a collab. He came down to Exeter yesterday on the train. Um, thank you by the way for coming. I don't think yeah, I actually said thank you. <laughs> um, and we've got a whole bunch of questions on Jamie's laptop which we're gonna answer for you. This is gonna be split into loads of parts. We've got one part on my channel, then the next part's gonna be on Jamie's. So if you're not subscribed to Jamie, check him out. Uh, and this one's gonna be about Oxford type questions and then your one's gonna be... I think we're gonna go Oxford type questions I got asked and then we're gonna do Life related questions and then fun related questions like what's the favourite Game of Thrones character? Yeah. Which I'm gonna leave for last because I I don't know yet. I haven't and read the books yet, so give me some time. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> and we've also got some questions about working and studying, so we'll, we'll probably do a video yeah. on that. So hopefully find these useful and now we're gonna get in through blitzing through all these questions because we've got a load to get through. Yeah, you guys. So you thank guys you for submitting. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you guys. Video one of the QA collaboration. Take one, I guess. Is that you do it, or do you have to put it closer? I don't know, I blinked, if I should, should... One! Okay, so Leah asked, how should you choose an Oxford College? My first answer to that is, you should watch my video on how to choose an Oxford College. But aside from that, there are loads of resources you can do to narrow down exactly where you might enjoy going. Especially if you're an international student and you can't visit the colleges. Even though I wasn't an international student, I still didn't actually visit any of the colleges prior to going to Oxford. Well, except one, which was Keeble. That's because I stayed there for a week. That's not, that's not a good representation. No, but like every single college has different nuances uh, in terms of its personality. So what I would advise is check out the Alternative Prospectus by the Oxford University Society. That was called Auzu. Yes. Auzu, yeah. No, Oxford, it's Oxford University Student Union. That's it. That's the it. Student because we interacted with it so much as students that uh -huh. yeah. We just called it Auzu all the time, so I actually don't know what the acronym stands for. <laughs> um, we will put a link down in the description for you so you can check out that alternative prospectus. And it breaks down all the different colleges, and everyone's put a little introduction to what each college does, and whether it has a 24 hour library, how close it is to the department, um, how close it is to food, how cheap is food there in terms of the bar or in terms of meals that you're getting, and also whether there's Wi-Fi or whether you're using cable, um, the Ethernet I think is what we use nowadays. Who doesn't use Wi-Fi? I don't. I mean, I think that the best thing, to, the best thing to do if you can is visit the colleges because that's that's the only way you're going to tell whether you're going to feel at home. Although well, she specifically said that she's international and she can't visit the colleges. So but if we have you to think if you can, one. if you can visit the colleges, that's the best thing to do. Um, I think otherwise. Projects like Oxblog and Oxtweet. Um, if you don't know about Oxtweet, check out Jamie's channel and just on Twitter, hashtag Oxtweet. Um, they give a good impression of what the sort of student life is like at various colleges, I think. Um, it's sort of snapshots. It's not going to be truly representative. You're never going to get a proper representation without going, but there is plenty of information online. Use um, the college will have its own website. More often than not, JCR will have its own website, um, in addition to things like YouTube channels and you know other products. So just I, I don't know, it, it's a bit of a bewildering choice because there's about 30 to choose from and it's just whittling that down to a number that you can properly research. I way. think the important point to say is, no matter what college you go to, everyone I've spoken to always loves their college. Yeah, like, at the end of it, you, you think your college is the best. Exactly. So I don't really think there's room for you to make a wrong decision, yeah. but that's how you can make a somewhat informed decision. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You can choose at random. I mean, there was one guy who was oh, yeah. a theology at St. Peter's who chose it because he was called Peter. <laughs> so, and he ended up loving the college. So, you know, you're going to end up at the best college, whatever you do. Yep. But yeah, make use of the resources available. And that includes Jamie's video. So Jason asked, what advice would you give to those oh, from further the last education one, into <laughs> work? And Simon's now going to answer it. <laughs> well, yeah, well, let me finish. You asked the last question. This is my channel. Okay, wait, start. <laughs> Jason asked, what's our advice for those going from further education into work? Um, I actually haven't got into work yet, so I think Jamie, you're the only one that can answer this question. <laughs> oh, what a funny twist of fate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, you could hypothesize. <laughs> I could hypothesize. <laughs> Were I working? From further education to work? Um, okay, so I think the biggest thing to bear in mind is that the transition from further education into work is not just an instant thing that just happens. It's a marathon that you start laying the foundation for when you arrive at university, or in fact you could be planning it even before then. So when I was in first year I was starting to get a feel for what exactly do I want to 
do with my life after this and participating in numerous different events whether it be like competitions or hackathons or going to societies and seeing if I like maybe making videos and also I spoke to the careers fair to figure out how in the world do you write a CV just so when I do want to apply for a job I know at least what a good CV looks like and I also know kind of what a cover letter looks like and great advice on how to do those things is also on my channel um, if you need to do that sort of things and you should also check to see whether you have a career service that offers interview technique advice and ultimately it comes down to just having conversations with people about advice as to how did you decide what to do after leaving education because then the method that they use to inform that decision will help inform your decision and talking to those people whether they be alumni, people older than you, your parents, uh, tutors um, or even just going to careers events and just having questions that you want to go in with that level of engagement is really valued because those people go to these events and they're just like um yeah so I'm here for the free stuff uh, which you know get that stuff as well but try and go in with an, an idea of what direction you want to go to or what direction you want to see if you're interested in and then constantly keep doing that. Oh, well, can I, if I can add to what you just said, I think yep. the other important thing is, um, which I actually didn't realise until I left, was um, get LinkedIn. LinkedIn is genuinely <laughs> yeah. really, really useful if you're trying to network. Um, because half of, half of getting a job is knowing the right people and sort of working around that. And you mm -hmm. can do that by networking in real life, but equally you can do that by networking online. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also a useful, we were talking about this yesterday in mm -hmm. terms of um, people will invest in you not based on a once-off interaction, they want to look at your trajectory, they want to see what you've done in the past. And so, you know, on LinkedIn you'll put in your past experience, your projects that you've worked on. So people can say, oh yeah, this person's gone from this to this to this, um, you've got this award, you were at this society. It's, uh, if they if they want to look into you, it's a, it, it's a chance to impress them. So it's like an online interactive CV almost, so definitely get LinkedIn. Okay, so Alex is asking to tell you guys about what our colleges were like, pros, cons, etc. She'd look at both of our channels for that, really. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> we've produced a lot of videos on this. Okay. Well, I can say that Peter's was better. Um, you know, just categorize. Oh wait, no, there's a battle question <laughs> coming later on. So the pros of Moreland are huge college, beautiful grounds, three years accommodation guaranteed, and four years, actually, if you're doing a four-year course. Um, great amount of history, and there's Deer Park. Cons? Um, <laughs> one of the cons that could get annoying is that the accommodation is somewhat fragmented across the college. So then upon moving from first year accommodation where everyone is together, you then start moving to different zones within the college. It's still within the college grounds, but it's still like this is Grove, this is Swithens, this is uh, new buildings, etc. And that can create some fragmentation in terms of the social atmosphere because Unlike St. Peter's, we don't really have one spot where we always go to as much, which changes with the individuals who go to the college, because obviously an institution is only constitute of its parts, but that's a con that I thought was there. But you get rounded by having a fantastic friend group. Yeah, I mean, any, any, any cons from a that you're going to hear about from any college, they're workable. They're, they're not absolute, you know, if you go to this place, you will get Ebola kind of thing. <laughs> they're, they're like, oh, your social life might fragment a bit, but then there's a workaround. Mm -hmm. um, so to answer the same question for St. Peter's, pros, you've got, um, I think, an un unmatched social scene uh, in any college. I mean, it's, it's known as being the friendly college, and as, as sort of Jamie alluded to, we have a JCR and bar which is right in the centre of the college, and they are used constantly, uh, compared to a lot of other colleges where, I mean, you said the JCR isn't really used in really. and it's the same in a lot of other colleges there's sort of a, it's sort of a room it's upstairs yeah it's a room which is just there and you know it's out of people's way whereas St Peter's it's right at the hub of the college you're always guaranteed to bump into somebody you know the bar is the best in Oxford um, you know and, and it just it's and there's, there's so much stuff going on here the social steam is amazing um, other pros you've got I actually think it's a big pro that we don't have accommodation guaranteed in second year I know other people prefer to live in for three years but I think having the experience of living out for a year uh, and still having the, the sort of safety blanket of college means that you can live out but you know if you have a problem with your landlord the college can get behind you if it's serious and they can provide support you always have somewhere to eat in college it's kind of like a halfway house between moving up from uni to moving out properly and I know some people who've gone from living in uh, halls their entire uni experience to moving out it's quite a big transition yeah um, so you've got to deal with leases and landlords and uh, content agreements and, uh, yeah 
So I think I actually think that's a big advantage. And then you've also got, I mean, the sport at Peter's is fantastic. Anything which relates to people, basically, you know, because there are so many interactions going on. There's there's fantastic sport, fantastic music. Um, the drama scene is actually very good in college. Um, the disadvantage is, is basically because it's a new college, we don't have very much money. Um, so oh, Magdalen has loads of money. Yeah, <laughs> it's the third richest college in Oxford. So that's yeah. a pro. Like, what the pros of that are great student support funds. So if you have financial um, difficulties at any moment in time, there's funding there. But then there's also a sports fund, and there's also numerous different uh, uh, competitions you can enter. Having said that, they've tried. The university is trying to normalise the student support fund for financial aid. So the rich colleges will donate to a bigger fund, and thus the colleges with the lower endowment also get the same amount of financial support. Yeah. So there's no disadvantage there in that regard, but sometimes you find there are more bursaries available, like travel grants. Yeah, rich but there are also centralised ones as well. Yeah. It's not like if you go to St Peter's, you're never going to see any money, because if no. you if you need support, it will be there. I um, mean, look at it. Yeah, You've seen I, the money. I, I need the support. <laughs> um, and I suppose the other thing to say is because, and it will generally, the, the big impact of not having very much money as a college is that the, the grounds and facilities aren't necessarily going to be as nice. But when I say that, I mean that things are going to be built in the 60s and 70s rather than in the 1360s and 1370s. Yep. But that has its own advantage in that it doesn't fall apart. 1458 is when Magdalen was founded by uh, William Wainfleet. St. Peter's was, oh god, uh, 1960. What? 1960? 1961. My dad is older than your college. <laughs> so is mine. <laughs> well, no, we were a whole 19. So that's a potential pro slash con. Is that if you want like traditional Oxford spires, maybe St Peter's isn't the college for you. But if you still, if you that doesn't bother you and you want to be amongst all of the dreaming spires, then yeah. It completely I'll, depends what experience you want. I mean, we're complete. We're Can we jump into the next question. Yeah, we've we've, we've, we've been talking talk about this while. forever. Sorry. I hope that answers your question, Alex. Yeah, sorry. It's not a feud, it's academic banter. No one dies. Not no. anymore. Though I think... <laughs> not anymore. There was that thing, was it... No, it was Merton, I think, where somebody died in like a couple of centuries ago, which is why they send the barrel of wine to Balliol every year. Oh! 